Hey there, Purposeful People. This month on the Work With Purpose podcast, we're actually finishing season five, uh, where we're talking about a couple of great clips I uh, got, got for you from earlier podcast episodes here in season five. You're going to get some really great help on thinking about professional associations. Uh, you'll get some insight from me about how to think about uh, language skills on your resume and in your career documents. So stick around. You want to be there for this episode, uh, this uh, season five, episode 10 of our podcast. It starts for you right now. Welcome to the Work With Purpose podcast, the show that gives you advice, education, and encouragement for your career journey. And now, here's your host, Randy Mahoney Jr. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of uh, the Work With Purpose podcast. I'm Randy. So glad to uh, be with you this month. This uh, this month, we're wrapping up our uh, podcast season five, uh, bringing you a couple of clips and some other great things that we've got with our, our podcast episode. And so glad that you are joining with us. As we get started on our on our podcast episode, I want to invite you um, you know, if if you're finding this episode helpful, definitely consider sharing this episode with a friend, uh, someone who might need it. Uh, we're covering some really good topics, some important topics um, in our episode today, looking back on a couple of some of our uh, episodes from season five. If you are new to our show, uh, we, we work to provide advice, education, and encouragement to help you uh, in your career journey. And we try to do that in about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, during each episode, typically we air uh, our new podcast episodes on uh, the fourth week of the month during the time that we are in our uh, podcast seasons. And so as uh, we get into this month's episode, um, I'm excited to bring this first clip to you. Um, it's a little bit of a different format. Um, we've got a couple uh, great clips from our uh, from a couple different episodes from our fifth podcast season. And you know, right, we'll get right into it. So the first clip uh, that I'm excited to bring to you comes from uh, season five, episode three. And it's more uh, from that episode that um, uh, a couple of tips to help you like or love your job again in the year 2024. And so if you are uh, watching this episode on our YouTube uh, channel, on the YouTube version of our show, or if you are listening to us on uh, your favorite podcast app, if you look in the show notes with this podcast, if you, uh, in your podcast app, if you look in the description below, this video, if you're watching us on the YouTube version of our show, you'll see the links for all these full episodes. So you can kind of get uh, more of the details that we're not uh, covering in our uh, episode this time. So, and right now we'll get into uh, this clip from our season five, episode three. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, it's more um, a really good tip to help you like or, your, or love your job again in any year, not just 2024. This clip talks about, about how important it is to serve. Check it out. This month, we're talking all about four tips that you can use to start to like your job again or love your job again in 2024. So tip number one is this. Think about who you can serve or who you can help. Think about who you can serve or who you can help in your current position. Now, the reason I wanted to put that tip in front of you is um, that I heard this tip a couple years ago. Um, when uh, the person I was uh, seeing or reading about, they shared that they had a friend of theirs who was really struggling in their job and they couldn't really shake that. This well-known figure shared that the, the way that their friend got out of that kind of funk, as it were, was they tried to think about their current position and really focus on one day at a time, who is the person that I can serve? Who is the person that I can help in the, in the work that I do? So that's my encouragement to you. As you think about your current position, whether you're an accountant and you work to make sure that small business owners' taxes are correct and accurate, which gives your client peace of mind and ease that they won't necessarily be audited by the IRS at tax time. Uh, that's a great example of from that role, how can that specific example role I gave you, how can they serve someone else? Who are they serving? And what is the outcome of the work that they would do? So that would be my encouragement to you. As you think about your current position, think about who can you help? Who can you serve from the work that you do each day? And what's the positive outcome that comes from your action to serve those? 
All right, again, that comes from uh, Season 5, Episode 3, uh, Four Tips to Help You Like or Love Your Job Again in 2024. Um, again, you can look in the uh, description below this video if you're watching us on the YouTube version of our show, or uh, you can um, l look in the show notes on uh, your favorite podcast app, and you can see a link for the full episode there. Um, I really liked uh, that clip. The reason I want to put that in front of you is because I, I realize so often with you know, whether you're working in a job that you might not like. And the reason I wanted to put that tip in front of you of how important it is to think about in your job right now, or even the job that um, that you might want to have, uh, have very soon, if you're job searching right now, uh, getting this episode, the decision that you and I make, the decision we make to think about who is someone we can serve and how can we serve them on a, you know, one day at a time kind of mindset. The reason that's so important is because if you're in a job that might not be your ideal job, um, it can really help you with the emotions of that. And it can help you help you really wrestle through, you know, um, so much of what can really uh, truthfully be, um, you know, if you're struggling in your job, you're really focused on yourself and kind of what you're getting out of a position and not necessarily thinking about how uh, not you're not necessarily thinking about the good that you can do in, in any job, in any position, whether you're more of the senior leader in charge or more of the new hire trying to uh, to, to cut your teeth and get um, get involved. So that, that decision to serve, I would definitely encourage you if, you, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, if you are struggling in your position right now, I would definitely encourage you to consider taking some time to think about in your position. Yes, that one that you're in right now. Yes, exactly that one that you're in at that company right now. Think about who can you help in your position? Who, who, who is your customer? Who is the person in front of you that even though they might be challenging to work with that you might need to give them some extra mercy, some extra grace and be willing to serve and help them think about who are they and think about how can you help them and even in a small tangible way. Again, that's a clip from our uh, season five, uh, episode three, a couple of tips on how to like and love your job again. All right. So before we get into um, uh, the next part of our episode, um, I wanted to remind you just a couple of quick things here that um, I want to remind you uh, that if you want to stay up to date with our podcast and everything that we are doing um, in the next um, handful of months as we are going into our planning season for season six through the end of 2024, um, I want to remind you that here at the Work With Purpose podcast, we have a free newsletter, free in your inbox. So if you want to um, stay up to date on everything we're doing and join uh, that newsletter and stay up to date on new uh, you know career training events or new products that we might be putting together, I invite you to join our newsletter. Letter, you can visit our website, wwpcast.com slash newsletter. Again, wwpcast.com slash newsletter, and um, you can get um, access to that. So hope that uh, you would definitely check that out. I'd love to love to have you as an awesome subscriber, a uh, purposeful subscriber on our newsletter. Again, join our newsletter, wwpcast.com slash newsletter. Okay, so uh, we've got our uh, first clip out of the way of Season 5, Episode 10, um, the best of Season 5. Um, so we've already talked about one helpful tip to help you like or love your job again. The next clip that I want to put in front of you, um, it comes from Season 5, Episode 8, um, and it's all about professional associations or trade associations. Um, we talked so many, um, so uh, a couple, uh, you know, when this episode came out, we talked so, uh, so many different ways about what a professional association is, how it can help somebody in their professional development and their longer term career development. So um, I really think you'll like this uh, clip right now and it'll help you. So uh, in this clip from season five, episode eight, we're talking about um, a couple benefits of a professional association. Check it out. As well, so I wanted to put a couple of benefits that um, the, of why someone might want to join a professional association or join a trade association. Um, I want to put a couple of those in front of you, just um, from my own um, insight. So the here's uh, benefit number one of a professional association: uh, if you're changing careers or industries, joining a professional association it allows you to really link arms. Uh, with other professionals. So kind of like what I was sharing with earlier, if you're someone who has been in one career field for a long time, and now you're trying to you think about your transferable skills, think about, you know, trying to learn about a new industry or learn about uh, something, uh, a new career field, a professional association can really help you um, start to uh, connect with professionals in your newly chosen career field and do that really, really quickly. Um, a lot of times, for professional associations. Now, it'll depend on the specific group you're looking at, 
But a lot of times these specific groups, um, once you become a paying member, um, a lot of times that will give you uh, the ability to attend conferences um, or w online webinars for your specific field or for your specific industry. Sometimes some professional groups though also uh, for paying members, they will have a, a connection to a connection to uh, specific online publications and things like that, which, you know, you can read articles about the, your specific field, your specific industry, or the, the new field you're trying to go into. And that can really help you get connected um, faster with other professionals who are doing a job you'd like to go into or who are working for a company you'd like to work for. Um, it can really, really help that a lot, um, especially with networking with other professionals. I wanted to also say, too, I know that sometimes depending on the professional association or the trade group that you choose to choose to become a member of. Um, sometimes uh, one of the benefits for paying members in a, uh, in, in a professional association is that they give you access to their member directory and that can kind of help you as you are, you know, may, maybe you choose to look through that uh, specific directory and you choose to kind of help, you know, do some, do some informational interviews or learning kinds of interviews about uh, from a professional who's working for a specific company that you'd like to work for or who's doing a specific job that you're trying to build your skills in so that you can, you know, move into that. Um, that's a really good benefit of uh, professional associations, the uh, chance to work with professionals. Uh, another benefit of uh, professional associations is that a lot of times for uh, individuals who are currently uh, a college student or going back to school, um, someone who might be in graduate school, or even if you are a professional who is retired, a lot of times professional associations can offer a discounted rate. Um, whereas, you know, uh, so that might be a discount on your yearly membership for that association, which is great. Um, so that can make the bar of uh, paying to join a professional association a little bit easier um, and something really uh, to think about. All right. And again, that uh, that clip comes from season five, episode eight of uh, the Work With Purpose podcast, giving you a lot more details about uh, professional associations. That episode's really, really great. We cover a, uh, a lot of examples of real life professional associations from a lot of different industries. And uh, you definitely want to check that out. So I want to want to remind you, if you are watching the video version of our show, um, if you want uh, the links to all these season five episodes, so you can kind of get those and uh, get, get links to the professional associations and see everything that we're uh, talking about and help you in your career, you, uh, you can look below this video in the description. If uh, you are uh, listening on your favorite podcast app, if you look on our show notes, you can find the full links to um, our episodes right there. So again, um, as we keep moving along with our season five, uh, episode 10, here of the Work With Purpose podcast, um, I wanted to put in front of you uh, and pause for a moment, and I wanted to uh, tell you about a really great career resource that um, that I think could really help you if uh, you are job searching right now and you're trying to find a, uh, a remote job or take steps to do that. And this uh, resource is really, really great. It's called uh, Real Help for Remote Work. It's an online training event. It's offered in a lot of different ways. Um, this is a uh, actual training um, <clears throat> Training it's offered, uh, developed it a couple uh, months ago, earlier in 2024, but um, wanted to put in front of you this uh, this uh, career resource called Real Help for Remote Work. There's a couple different versions on how you can uh, get this uh, career training. There's an audio version, a video version, and then uh, something I'm calling the audio vi video bundle, which you get everything together. Whichever version you choose to uh, you choose to uh, purchase and look at, um, you get um, a copy of the slide deck from this um, over 40 minute uh, career training event about finding a remote work in a purposeful way. Um, you get the um, workbook along with it that gives you kind of fill in notes so you can kind of stay along with it and uh, stay up to date on it. So I definitely would encourage you uh, if you want a real help for remote work available in audio format, video format, or even the audio video bundle, I think it'll give you a really great help and some insight to take purposeful, intentional steps to find a remote job or take steps to, to do that. So if you want your copy of uh, Real Help for Remote Work, you can visit our website at wwpcast.com slash real help for remote work. And there's dashes between each word. So uh, get Real Help for Remote Work by visiting wwpcast.com slash real dash help dash for dash remote dash work. And now we'll get back to our show. 
All right, and welcome back to this episode of the Work With Purpose podcast. Um, we're, uh, this month, we're giving you uh, the best of season five. We've, uh, so far, we've talked through a couple uh, clips from some of our episodes of season five. We talked about professional associations and a little bit more about uh, the decision to serve someone else in your job to help you with that, uh, help you like or love your job again. Um, as we kind of get towards the, the end of our show uh, this month, I'm excited to put one more um, uh, podcast clip in front of you from season five. And this time it comes from season five, episode four, a little bit earlier in our podcast season. And this time, um, I'm excited about uh, putting this in front of you because this is a topic I get asked about um, pr pretty often, um, but uh, this topic will be really helpful to, to give you some of my uh, personal insight on how could somebody talk about or think about using language skills or even multiple languages on their resume or uh, their career documents. So uh, right now, we'll get into this clip from Season 5, Episode 4, Using uh, Language Skills on Your Resume. What comes to mind is that, you know, let's say if you and I were engaging in a little bit of career coaching, let's say you were job searching and that you were asking for a little bit more uh, career help and you asked me, hey, Randy, you know, should I develop energy? Should I put time into, um, you know, learning a language or what have you? Probably the answer I would come back to is that it depends. It depends really on what your career goal is. Um, sometimes when I've worked with learners before, um, they've shared with me that either they've developed skills in some of uh, specific languages, or maybe that's just part of their, you know, uh, their cultural background, cultural history, and things like that. Um, but even with a situation like that, I would say when you think about developing your foreign language skills, my encouragement is have it be purposeful, have it be something intentional for your career development journey. Now, I want to say that as well, um, that what I mean by developing language skills so that there's something intentional is that, number one, if you and your foreign language skills, if those skills are important to you, such as you value that as part of your cultural heritage, and I am a huge and in favor of that, I want to be sensitive to that um, for a lot of uh, folks who are job searching and individuals, um, many, many times that's, uh, that's part of someone's story and I want to be sensitive to that. But sometimes uh, what I would say is that as you are job searching, if you are wanting to highlight your foreign language skills, my encouragement is have it be intentional by that you target companies or organizations or positions where those skills would be asked for as part of the position. So in the article, they mentioned healthcare um, organizations, uh, professional services, so think customer service representatives, um, customer support types of roles, which can uh, work in a lot of different industries, even, even insurance agents, insurance adjusters, things like that, where you're working more directly with individuals um, on, to try to help solve their problem, things like that. A lot of times, and you know, even in the article, they mentioned a, a healthcare example of how the intentional use of foreign language skills helped build trust between healthcare staff and patients. So that's a very purposeful, intentional example of why those foreign language skills really uh, prove to be incredibly helpful in that uh, in that person's work there. So my encouragement to you is if you choose to develop and put time in developing a foreign language skill, whether that's, you know, uh, maybe a little bit easier, if that's part of your cultural heritage, um, you know, that's great. If you choose to use another service or application, um, like Duolingo, I've heard of, it is a really popular language learning app. If you choose to put effort and energy into developing a foreign language skill, my encouragement to you is have it be something purposeful and intentional, which uh, which will um, look like you're trying to target companies and roles and organizations who are asking for those specific foreign language skills or um, where that's going to be, you know, show up on a day-to-day -day basis in the work that you do. So have it be purposeful and intentional and not just another box that you check on your resume, not just something that you just throw on your resume because you've done it. All right. So again, that clip comes from uh, season five, episode four of uh, the Work With the Purpose podcast. Hope you found that really, really helpful uh, as far as how to think about um, how to consider using language skills on uh, your resume, your other career documents, and even as you think about 
your uh, your job search as well. So uh, as we get to uh, the end of this month's episode, that actually brings us uh, with that last clip that brings us to the very end of this month's episode and also the end of our uh, fifth podcast season. So um, as we kind of wrap up this episode and uh, season five of the Work With Purpose podcast, I want to say thank you so much for uh, downloading our show, for watching or listening to us, however you've chosen to uh, to engage with us. I'm grateful for it. I realize that, uh, that there's so many different things that you could do with your time and your energy and your investment. I'm glad that you've chosen um, in a big way or a small way uh, to, to be with us here on our different episodes. So as we uh, f- finish up this month's episode, I want to uh, just remind you that as um, uh, if you have any career questions um, as we go along in the next handful of months, as we finish our podcast season, anytime, you can always visit our website, uh, wwpcast.com slash ask. That's wwpcast dot com slash ask. And when you go there, it'll uh, give you a couple different ways that you can fill in um, our uh, podcast question form and you can fill in your information and you can get your career questions answered. Um, That might show up in a future podcast episode from us, or it might be a a separate video or um, bonus upload on our uh, podcast feeds as well. So again, uh, for your career questions, I'd love to answer those for you and help you serve you as best I can. Uh, Visit our website, wwpcast dot com slash ask. Um, also, I wanted to say too, if you are uh, finding this episode fe- helpful, if you've uh, looked through our other episodes, watched our other episodes, and uh, you like everything that uh, we're doing here, I would definitely encourage you consider sharing this episode um, with a friend of yours who might need it, whether they're job searching or what have you. When you uh, share this episode with uh, someone who might need it, um, that puts our content, our educational career content in front of new people so that uh, so that uh, they can get exposed to our show and kind of join uh, a lot of what we're doing and really learn uh, and really get ed- practical advice, education, and encouragement that they can use um, in their career journey. So I definitely would encourage you to, to consider sharing this. And then also, as uh, again, as we wrap up here, I do want to uh, remind you, if, if you're finding our episodes, if uh, our resource is helpful and things like that, and you want to support our work, we have a lot of different ways that you can do that. But the uh, the best way to, the, to kind of get started on that is you can visit our website, wwpcast dot com slash shop. That's again, wwpcast.com slash shop. And you can see all of our uh, different career resources and a place to start there um, as well. So again, wwpcast.com slash shop. All right. So again, that brings us to uh, the end of this month's episode and also the end of season five of our podcast. I do want to uh, pause real quick and say, um, uh, even though this is the end of season five, um, just remember we are uh, starting or planning to start season six of the Work With Purpose podcast. You can look for us to come back in January of 2025 for season six um, with a whole slew of episodes and some other things for that. But again, I've given you a couple ways at how you can stay connected with us. You can join our newsletter letter. You can um, stay up to date uh, with our podcast that way. You can consider supporting our work and you can always stay stay checked in on to our uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, search YouTube, search for the Work With Purpose podcast. Even uh, we're on social media as well. You can check our Facebook page, find us on LinkedIn as well. Um, but as we wrap up this month's episode, again, I want to say thank you so much uh, for watching and uh, for listening. And as we uh, end today, I want to remind you of two quick things. Um, and uh, they are these. So number one, uh, you've been made with purpose. So work with purpose. And the number two is this. The best work that you can ever do is to serve someone else with your skills and your abilities, and to do all that for the glory of Jesus Christ. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on the Work With Purpose podcast. If you'd like the show notes for this episode or want to learn more, visit our website at www.pcast.com. If you found today's episode helpful, be sure to subscribe to our show, rate and review it on iTunes, or share it with a friend on social media. Until next time, thanks for listening to the Work With Purpose podcast.